Philippians chapter 1, and uh, a couple of things that we're going to be covering is, I want you to think about, here's some questions I want you to think about, is, <laughs> number one, how can I effectively share my faith? Number two, what does it mean to live a worthy Christian life? Uh, number three, what is a Christian, what does true Christian hu uh, humility look like? Next question is, where can I find true satisfaction for my soul? Next is, how can I rejoice during tragedy? Two more questions. Number one, next one is, what do I do when I'm stressed? A lot of people, as we see right now, are going through the difficulties of tragedy or stress. And then lastly, what is it? What does a passionate follower of Christ uh, look like? So um, we're going to read the first part of Philippians here, uh, Philippians chapter 1. And then we're going to um, dive in and go to where it all started, which is actually in the book of Acts. So <clears throat> Paul writes this book, and here it is, Paul, Philippians 1. Paul and Timothy, uh, and Timothy, servants of Christ Jesus, to all the saints in Christ Jesus who are in Philippi with overseers and deacons. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and Lord Jesus Christ. So the reality is Paul is writing this book, um, the Apostle Paul is writing to the church in Philippi. So he's writing to uh, a, a church. And so now he's going to go on and continue to, to address them. And Paul loves these people. This is actually Paul's second missionary journey, but really the first church that's being planted. And so in verse 3 he says, I thank my God in all my remembrance of you, always in prayer of mine for you, and making my prayer with joy because of your partnership in the gospel uh, from the first day until now. And I am sure of this, that he who began a good work in you will bring it to completion at the day of Jesus Christ. It is right for me to feel this way about you all because I hold you in my heart, for you are, for you are all partakers with me in gra of, of grace, both in my imprisonment and in the defense and confirmation of the gospel. For God is my witness how I yearn for you with the affection of Jesus Christ, or Christ Jesus. And it is my prayer that your love may abound more and more with knowledge and all discernment so that you may approve what is excellent and so be pure and blameless for the day of Christ. So we're going to pause there. But why does Paul write in such a way? And it's because he has this connection with this church. This is the first church that he plants. He has a connection with people. Um, he has gone through a lot, which we're going to see in uh, the book of Acts. Uh, we're going to see some one-on-one -on -one, uh, relationships of some of the people that are actually at the church uh, of Philippi. So he has a deep relationship with these people. And so what we don't see here is church day one. What we see is Paul is on this journey, and then he encounters people. And then as he encounters people, then what we're going to see is He's writing back to them. So he's there's this letter written to the church of Philippi where he's had these one-on-one -on -one interactions with the people that we're about to see in the book of Acts. So if you would, turn to Acts chapter 16. Um, it's just a couple of books over to the left. So in the, if you're unfamiliar, in the New Testament, you have Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, then Acts. And then Romans. So we're in book or in Acts chapter 16. And so as we are there. <clears throat> we're gonna read um, verses six through forty. There's a lot. We'll pause a little bit probably. But yeah, we'll do that. All right. Acts 16. Verse 6. So here's the call. Here's Paul's call. We're going to look at Paul's call. After his call to go and take the gospel, I'm going to do give you a cheat sheet. There's three people that he encounters, or three, three instances. Number one, we see him encounter a lady named Lydia. Uh, number two, we see, um, we're going to see um, Paul and Silas, um, they meet this this woman who was really a fortune teller and they command the demons out of her. Um, and then the last one is as they're in jail, we're going to see that uh, the jailer 
who is in charge of them gets gets uh, gets saved. So three stories there. So we'll start in verse six. Uh, so Acts chapter sixteen, verse six, and it says, "And they went through the region of Phrygia and Galatia, having been forbidden by the Holy Spirit to speak the word in Asia. Uh, and when they had come up to Mysia, they attempted uh, to go to Bithynia." But the Spirit of Jesus did not allow them. So passing at Mysia, they went down to Troas, and a vision appeared to Paul in the night. A man of Macedonia was standing there, urging him and saying, Come over to Macedonia and help us. And when Paul had seen the vision, immediately he sought to go into Macedonia, concluding that God had called us to preach the gospel to them. So God was clearly stopping them from going to one place. and said, No, I want you to go to this place. And so Paul uh, is on a mission, right? He's on a mission to preach the gospel, and God has him going to a certain area. So now, verse 11, we see, so uh, setting sail to Troas, as he says that we made a direct voyage to uh, Samothrace and, following, uh, and the following day to Neapolis, and from there to Philippi. So remember, that's what we're talking about. Paul's writing to the Philippians, to the church in Philippi. So, which is the leading city of the district of Macedonia and Roman colony. So like, this place is hopping. This is where all the, the, this is the marketplace. This is where all the trade's going. So all the supplies are going in and out of this place. So this is a very popular happening spot, a lot of business. And he says that we remained in the city for some days, verse 13. And on the Sabbath day, we went outside the gate to the riverside where we supposed there was a place of pr uh, prayer. And we sat down and spoke to a woman who had, uh, come together. So look, Paul comes, like, this is a great place. The Lord has us here. <clears throat> Let's go pray. And then they find this woman. So now in verse 14, it says, one, uh, one who heard us was a woman named Lydia. Um, and if you were alive with me, I'd say, say Lydia. And everyone said, Lydia. And uh, from the city of Theatira, a seller of purple goods who is a worshiper of God. So I'm going to pause right there. So why does the Bible give us all these details, right? It's important for us to know this is a happening place. This, uh, this lady named Lydia, seller purple, um, that color purple is very rich. So this, this lady here, she is an entrepreneur, um, businesswoman, killing it, probably very wealthy. And uh, the Bible wants us to know this because we're going to see about what happens with her heart, right? So it says, uh, it continues in verse uh, 14. It says, and the Lord... Open her heart to pay attention to what Paul uh, to to what was said by Paul. So look, she had an understanding of who God was, but then God opened her heart to hear the gospel. God opened her heart to learn and hear about Jesus. And so, um, the Lord opened her heart to pay attention to what Paul had said in verse fifteen. And after she was baptized and her household as well, she urged us, saying. If you had judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come to my house and stay, and she, and, pre, and she prevailed upon us. So here's the deal. She gets saved. Her whole household gets saved. Paul baptizes them, and she's like, hey, let me uh, come and be a host. I want to take care of you. So, so now Paul had a place to stay, and now, well, if you continue to read the Bible, you'll see that this uh, businesswoman was funding a much of Paul's ministry. So you want to talk about a life radically changed. You see this woman uh, who hears the word. God opened her heart. She gets saved. Her whole family gets saved. And now she's like, come stay at our house, and I'm going to help fund what's going on. Pretty dope. Verse 16. Next. Now we got next. Uh, so one of three. Now we're going on to two or three. Verse 16. So 16, 16 says, as we were going to a place of prayer, we were met by a slave girl who had a spirit of divination and and brought her owners much gain by fortune telling. So this is not a person of the Lord. So fortune telling, spirit of divination, fortune telling, making money off of that. And it says in verse 17, she followed Paul and us crying out, these men are servants of the most high God who proclaim to you the way of salvation. Um, so she wasn't like their hype person, right? Uh, you know, sometimes you get your hype person. She wasn't their hype person, but uh, she was very annoying. And so and it says in verse 18, and this she kept doing for many days. And check this out. It's hilarious. Paul, having become greatly annoyed, turned and said to the spirit, I command you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And it came out that very hour. That is radical. 
you have this person who has um who's who's really um you know she is i would say borderline demon possessed she doesn't have the spirit of god she had a, a spirit of divination fortune telling that's not of the lord and she was annoying paul and paul commands um in the name of jesus that that spirit to come out of her and it did the Check this out, verse 19. But when her owners saw that their hope of gain was gone, why? Because they could no longer control her with the, with the evil spirit. They seized Paul and Silas, dragged them in the marketplace. Remember, it's a busy place. It's happening. Marketplace before the rulers. And when they had brought them to the magistrates, they said, these men are, are Jews, and they're disturbing the city. Um, so look. It says, they advocate customs that are not lawful for us as Romans or to accept or practice. So look, now it becomes a race card. It's pretty crazy. You gotta, gotta dig deep, and now it's a racial card. Look, they're Jews and we're Romans, and they're disturbing our city and our customs, and they say um, they advocate customs that are not lawful to us. So now it becomes a us, them, Jews, Romans, racial thing. And so in verse 22, it says, The crowd joined in attacking them, and the magistrates tore the garments off them and gave orders to beat them with rods. So look, it's not good, right? And now in verse 23, And when they had inflicted many blows upon them, they threw them into prison, ordering the jailer to keep them safely. So look, they are supposed to keep, the jailer is supposed to keep them safe. And let's see what happens. Having received this order, he put them in the inner prison and fastened their feet in stocks. So he was supposed to take good care of them. They've already been beaten with rods. And now he's taking them to the prison, taking them to the inner prison. Now, a stock is one of those things where, you, you know, you're, you're in this machine, you, you're in this device where your head's locked in, and you're chained up, and you're shackled like this. That wasn't the type of stocks that they were talking about. Um, or I should say stalking about, haha, -ha, bad dad joke right there. Um, I see Nathan laughing at me. Uh, just wait till your dad, dude, just wait. And uh, so what happens is these, if you were prison like these guys in the time that this was happening, which is around, gosh, uh, AD, like 40, 50, around there, um, they would chain you and contort your body to where it was uncomfortable. So you would be chained, not where you can move around or whatever, or not, you weren't even locked in a position. They would chain you down and contort your body so you were so miserable and uncomfortable. And they would, um, and you'd cramp up and you would, and they'd leave you there for days. No food, no water. They would leave you chained up, contorted for days. And they said that they were supposed to keep them safely. So now, Let's look at person number three. What's up, Dustin? Um, so now person number three. I think everyone's on mute. If you can stay on mute, it'd be great. Now, we're in Acts chapter 16, verse, 20, uh, verse 25. You want to join us, Dustin? Acts 16, 25. About midnight, Paul and Silas were, were praying and singing hymns to God, and the prisoners were listening to them. Wait, wait a minute. You have these guys who are beaten, thrown in prison, chained, all contorted, and they are singing hymns and songs to the Lord. They're singing, great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness. I don't know about you, I don't know how many of us would be singing great is thy faithfulness when you're chained and contorted up. Great is thy faithfulness, right? Like, Come on, man. So, so take a look at this. Verse 26. And suddenly there was a great earthquake. Yo, look. These dudes are being persecuted. They're tied up. They're chained up. Can't do anything. They're singing praises to God. And now the earth quaked. So that the foundations of the prison were shaken. And immediately all the doors were opened. And everyone's bonds were unfastened. That's pretty crazy. Verse 27, when the jailer woke and saw that the prison doors were open, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself, supposing the prisoner had escaped. So look, he's like, wait a minute. My job is to keep these people. He wakes up. I don't know how he's going to wake up from the earthquake, right? But he wakes up, 
And what he does, he sees all the doors are open. He's like, man, all these prisoners are out. You know what? I don't want to face the wrath to come to me. I'm going to take my sword and I'm going to kill myself. And let's see what happens. But Paul cried with a loud voice, do not harm yourself for we are all here. Verse 29, and the jailer called for the lights and rushed in and trembling with fear, he fell down before Paul and Silas. And in verse 30, then he, he brought, uh, then he brought them out and said, so the jailer brought him out and said, sirs, what must I do to be saved? Man, there is no God like our God. That's all I can say. You have the jailer who mistreated him, and now he brings him out, and he's at their feet, and he calls them sirs. He says, sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they said, believe on the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved, you and your household. That's pretty, that's pretty dope. I probably said that's pretty dope three times. This message is entitled, That's Pretty Dope. How about that? Philippians chapter 1, that's pretty dope. Uh, and they spoke the word of the Lord to him and to all who were in his house. And he took them the same hour of the night and washed their wounds. And he was baptized at once, he and his family. Then he brought them up to into his house and set food before him. And he rejoiced along with the entire household that he had believed in God. Bam. So why did we go and read that? Because this, the Lydia, the, the seller of purple, this slave girl who was into divination and fortune telling, this jailer who mistreated Paul and Silas, they come to know Jesus Christ through Paul giving up his life. So when we go and further read in later Philippians, to live is Christ, to die is gain, Paul lived it. There is nothing that Paul wouldn't do. There is no distance he wouldn't go. There is no person he wouldn't stop and talk to for the sake of the gospel. And so that is my encouragement to you guys is, is where are you at? My, my hope and prayer is that you know Christ. And if you don't know Christ, reach out to me immediately. I want to pray for you to come to know who Jesus Christ is because Christ can save you. And as we see, he didn't save you. He wants to impact your whole household. We saw it twice. Two, two people come to know Christ, them and their whole household come to know Christ. So we just touched the surface level. We're going to be going through the book of Ephesians. We just went into Ephesians chapter 1 today. And uh, in closing, let me go back to Ephesians chapter 1 real quick as we close out. Because we read Ephesians chapter uh, 1 verses um, whoops, 1 through, let me see, where am I at? One through nine. And then we went back to Acts chapter 16 to see the history of the early church. So when Paul writes, I thank my God in all remembrance of you, always in every prayer of mine, for you are making my prayer with joy because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now. And he keeps going on and on. He's talking about Lydia. He's talking about the the the, the girl who is um, in divination he's talking about the jailer that is the early church and so we have to realize none of us that are in this chat are people in your lives who know christ none of us would would be here in this crazy thing right here this google meet if it wasn't for jesus christ we probably have hardly anything in common but for somehow god has brought us together and my challenge is know christ and that's what Club Challenge is all about, is to, is to, is to, uh, to know and to grow, to know who this Christ is, and secondly, is to, um, is to grow in him. you got to know him. And once you know him, you grow in him. Amen? So why don't I pray, and then I'll open it up. If we have some open discussion, we can unmute. Let's pray. Father, thanks for your word. Thank you that you love us. Thank you for our time in Philippians. I'm looking forward to being in here on a daily basis with whoever you bring, and may you be honored and glorified. May people come to salvation and know who you are. And I pray, Lord, that not just people who jump in on this on this group, I pray that as they are changed by the gospel, I pray that they would go and tell their household, and I pray that their whole household would come to know you. So thank you for our time together. In Jesus' name, amen. By the way, love seeing a couple of you baseball guys in here. And